so we've got a size 6 long shank stream hook here and a 3.2 mil copper bead at the head and I'm going to start off with 6 odd thread I'm just building up a not a very um, thorough you know a bit of a loose thread base working back towards the bend of the hook and you cut the tag off there and you stop your thread right at the top of the bend now I've got a marabou plume here and you can tie it in the full plume for a very dense tail like that, you know, and fix it like that. It would look quite dense there. You can separate it out and grab either from the tip, or you can grab that and sort of getting it from the tip, and you'll get a bit of the stem in there, which can be good, or you can get it from the side, which is what I'm going to do now. So I'll sort of roll them together to get them to stick together, gauge my side, and then I'll just pluck them free from the stem. And I tie those in and I keep that excess material there to help build up a bit of bulk in the body so you can see the stems and things in there. And then you cover that up thoroughly with your uh, thread and work back towards the top of the bend of the hook there. Now you can cut these plumes with scissors but I like to rip them a little bit. It gives sort of a less uniform, more scraggly look and then a little bit more uneven, a little bit more natural I think. Now this pattern typically calls for green tinsel, but I've got this green um, sort of mylar wrap that I'm going to use. So I tie that in from the bead all the way back to maintain that body shape. And then I've got thin copper wire that's going to reinforce the hackle and act as a rib. Same thing, tie that in from the bead all the way back to the bend. finish with your thread up near behind the bead you're going to wrap touching turns over the entire body with the mylar or the tinsel and stop right behind the bead and tie that off with a couple of turns in front and a couple of turns behind and you cut off the excess then I've got a grizzly hackle and I'm plucking off some of the lower kind of more marabou downy fibers like that and I'm going to tie that in perpendicular to the shank of the hook by doing cross wraps over it and just secure that stem and then cut it and so I've left a bit of that sort of yeah, slightly marabou -y thing on the front I think it's nice and it bubbles up underwater and helps it kind of take on that tapered look that bait fish have so wrapping over if you, you can use hackle pliers here but I didn't sort of wrap back, I'm using my finger to sort of hold that and when you get towards the back of the fly you can use the wire to start to wrap in the opposite direction and that's going to cross over the hackle stems and secure it so it means you don't have to tie that off or anything it's the copper wires doing that and you bring that all the way up to the head I do one or two wraps in front of the front hackle the uh, leading hackle and then tie that copper wire off a few turns in front and a few turns behind and you can whip finish do a couple of whip finishes if you want or just one cut that off and I'm going to helicopter off that excess wire spinning it around with a little bit of tension until it weakens and breaks and then reach into the tip of your scissors and cut off that hackle tip that's still attached there and that is a Shrek fly that you can use for lake fishing is quite popular and you can adjust the tail even on the water you know if, if you're seeing smaller profile bait fish you can break it off smaller mm -hmm.